The braking is now being controlled by a computer called the Alternate Braking Control Unit or ABCU. A always B B C closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. Yo, 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 what's up guys, welcome to Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. Question, how many wheels does the A320 have? The A320 has two main landing gears and one nose landing gear. Okay, the nose landing gear can be turned left and right and has a shock strike. Two wheels are located at the nose. The main landing gear has two wheels also on each side and they have a shock absorber. This is also where Airbus installed the anti-skid brakes. Now, who controls these guys? These gears have two bosses, two computers by the name of LGCIU1 and LGCIU2. It stands for Landing Gear Control and Interface Units. I just call them Boss 1 and Boss 2. Boss 1 will control one complete cycle, then Boss 2 will take over for the next cycle. They take turns controlling the gear. If Boss 1 becomes sick, aka unserviceable, Boss 2 will take over and vice versa. There is a safety mechanism where if the aircraft flies above 260 knots, a safety valve will cut off hydraulic power to the gears. Let us talk about normal operation of the landing gear. When we select the landing gear down, this indication over this panel is connected to Boss 1 which is LGCIU1. If it is in green, it means the gear is down lock. If there is an unlock in red, that means the gear is not locked in the selected position. Let's take an example. Let's say you select the gear down and one unlock indication comes on. What do you do? Well, this panel receives the signal from LGCIU1 only. If LGCIU1 fails, then there is no indication on this panel. So you go to your wheel SD page and have a look. If there is one green triangle, it is enough to confirm the gear is down lock. Simple operation here, up and down lever. If a red arrow shows, it means the gear is not down lock when the aircraft is in landing configuration. You would also get an ECAB message. Normally, at what height will you get this warning? Do comment below if you know the answer. Let us talk about landing gear gravity extension. You pull the crank out and then turn it clockwise three times until you reach a mechanical stop. Each crank signifies something. Essentially, when you crank, you isolate the gear from the green hydraulic system. Then you unlock all the gear doors and the main and nose gear itself. And last but not least, it allows gravity to drop the gear. The aerodynamic forces will then push the nose gear into the lock position and with the main gear, the locking springs will do the job. Remember that all gear doors will remain open. The ECAM will show the landing gear doors down position in amber. Let us look at some ECAM indications. These two triangles here represent each LGCIU, BOSS 1 and BOSS 2. A green indication means the gear is down and locked. A red triangle indicates that the gear is in transit. No triangle indicates the gear is up and locked. Amber crosses means either boss 1 or boss 2 failed. And remember, you only need one green triangle to confirm that the gear is down lock. This symbol right here shows the door is locked up. If it is in amber, that means it is in transit. And finally, this means the landing gear doors are fully open. If your gear is down lock and the ECAM up lock appears, it means the gear up lock is engaged. Keep down the gear then. And remember, you will burn extra fuel when flying with gear down. There is also a maximum speed you can fly. If you know the answer, do comment below. Also, you can get a landing gear control in amber if your lever and gear position do not agree. Okay, now let us talk about this bad boy, the nose wheel steering. 
When you operate the hand wheel, you send signals to a computer called a BSCU, Brake and Steering Control Unit. This is just a fancy name for a computer that will interpret electrical signals and comply with your inputs. You can turn the nose using the hand wheel up to 75 degrees and if the ground crew is towing the aircraft, then the wheel can turn up to 95 degrees. When the aircraft speed increases, then gradually the deflection reduces to 0 by 80 knots ground speed. The rudder on the other hand can control a maximum of 6 degrees left or right up to 40 knots. This is reduced to 0 by 130 knots. After 130 knots, then you should have aerodynamic forces to steer the aircraft using the rudder. When you perform the flight control checks, press the paddle's disconnect push button. On takeoff, the BSCU will center the nose wheel on liftoff. Let us look at the ECAM indications. An amber nose wheel steering is shown on the wheel SD page if the nose wheel steering fails. You will get a nose wheel steering disconnect memo if the pins are inserted and will change to amber when one engine is running. Okay, now we move on to brakes and anti-skid. The main wheels are fitted with carbon multi-disc brakes and you have two channels of BSCU to control it. As with all aircraft redundancies, there are normal braking and alternate braking. You need green hydraulic pressure for normal brakes and yellow hydraulic pressure for alternate brakes. Just like traffic lights, green means go, yellow means go also. Well, it is an alternate go. Haha. <laughs> Just like the LG CRU, BSCU is like boss 1 and boss 2. They take turns to be in charge after every cycle. The BSCU also monitors the brake temperature residual brake pressure and wheel speed information. Okay, now we move on to the auto brake system. What is the auto brake for? As the name suggests, it is auto. The aircraft brakes for you. It reduces your workload and also improves passenger comfort. It is useful for rejected takeoffs. There are three modes, low, medium and max. Max is only used for takeoffs. The auto brake needs green hydraulic pressure to be available, no failure in the braking system, and at least one ADI RU and anti skid electrically powered. Once you get green hydraulics, you can press the button. A green diesel light will come on when the actual braking is 80% or more of the selected rate. During a rejected takeoff, it will not activate below 72 knots as the spoilers will not extend below this speed. The auto brake will deactivate on the ground if you step on the brakes or switch off the auto brake. Okay now, anti-skid system. Anti-skid is useful to avoid wheels from locking and skidding on the runway. How it works is that the BSCU will take the acceleration data from the ADIRU and once the wheel speed decreases below 0.87 times of the reference speed, the BSCU will release the brakes momentarily so that you can get the best braking efficiency. Some bonus here. So say you want to calculate the hydroplaning speed of the A320. Our tires are approximately 225 PSI. Nose and main wheels differ slightly in PSI. Take the formula 9 times square root of the tire pressure which is 225 PSI. So 9 times 15 and you get approximately 135 knots. 135 knots is your hydroplaning speed. Okay, next, we have four types of braking. Normal braking, alternate braking with anti-skid, alternate braking without anti-skid, and parking brake. Okay, for normal braking, if you have green hydraulic power and the anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch is on, you can brake manually or use the auto brakes. Next is alternate braking with anti-skid. The task of braking and anti-skid is now divided between two computers. The braking is now being controlled by a computer called the Alternate Braking Control Unit or ABCU. A always B B C closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. And the anti-skid is controlled by the BSCU. 
Remember that green hydraulics is used for normal braking. So if green hydraulics is insufficient, we now use the yellow hydraulics for braking. So now the ABCU will assist in opening the valve to pressurize the yellow hydraulic circuit. Alternate braking is used when the green hydraulic pressure is low and yellow hydraulic pressure is available. The anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch remains on. You can see the triple indicator to see the pressure being delivered left and right. So what is missing from alternate braking with anti-skid? Well, you cannot use the auto brake. Why? Because there's no green hydraulic pressure. Okay, next is alternate braking without anti-skid. Basically, you get this mode when you set the anti-skid and nose wheel steering to off. Or if there's a BSCU failure or both. Do check out my videos on loss of braking. So what do you have? Well, you have the accumulator pressure available only for 7 applications for braking. There is no auto brake and no anti-skid. Remember, the brake accumulator is supplied by the yellow hydraulic system. Make sure you check the triple indicator to limit your braking to a maximum of 1000 PSI. Why only 1000 PSI? Well, if you know the answer, do comment below. Okay, let us talk about parking brake. When we set the parking brake to on, the yellow hydraulic pressure will be used and you can see it via the triple indicator. You can also pressurize the yellow accumulators by pressing the yellow electric pump. The accumulator can maintain parking pressure for at least 12 hours. Well, that is what they say. A good tip is when you dock in the parking bay, have a look at the triple indicator before releasing your feet from the rudder pedals and then chocks should then be in place before releasing the parking brake. Especially when your brakes is hot, switch on the brake fans and put the chocks on. Final question. Why is that some of the aircrafts have landing gears that are tilted? Hmm. Food for thought.